everyone. Welcome to our breakout session. My name is Carol Cuyava. This is working with your regional support manager. And I am a regional support manager responsible for Arizona, Colorado, Utah, and New Mexico. And before we begin, we'll go over some housekeeping items. I'm sure all of you are very much um, familiar with this already, but we'll, we'll do it anyway. Um, this session is being recorded, and that recording will be available on our YouTube channel, the REC Foundation YouTube channel, tomorrow. Um, for microphones, if everyone who's joining the session today could just mute their microphone, that eliminates crosstalk and any background noise that might come through. Um, and I see that our panelists have their cameras on, and that's fantastic. If um, everybody else could keep their cameras off, that'll keep our panelists view up at the top of your screen and nice and large for everyone to see. Um, the question and answer portion of our panel, this is a panel format, so the beginning of our session will be our panelists speaking and then at the end we'll have questions and answers. Um, if you can use the chat function that you find in your GoToMeeting toolbar to answer, to ask questions uh, throughout the session, you can put the questions in there at any time. We will wait till the end, however, to address the questions. And we have two chat moderators with us today. We have Ben Mitchell and Ryan Osweiler, who both are also regional support managers, and they'll be monitoring our chat for us. And just make sure that when you do send your chat question out there that you make sure it's uh, addressed to everyone. That way everyone can see the question. And um, nine times out of 10, you know, multiple people have the same question. So that way we can consolidate our questions and everyone can see. All right. Um, the topic today is working with your regional support manager. And um, today with us are six event partners who have graciously given of their time to be here today with us, all from around the country and actually from around the world. Um, they were recommended to me by their regional support managers as being at the top of their game and hosting events. So thank you so much for being here with us today. Um, each of our panelists will spend two to three minutes in um, with some prepared remarks about their experience, personal experience in working with their regional support manager. Um, and then we will also hopefully get some input from our audience um, and maybe our panelists as well as to how we REC Foundation can help to improve the relationship that you have with your regional support manager. As you've heard th throughout the week, this week in various sessions, um, a lot of the unaddressed questions that have come up in the in the sessions, um, our presenters have said, you know, contact your regional support manager for questions. So your RSM is a very, very important person as far as your liaison to uh, the REC Foundation. So I'm going to introduce our panelists. Um, I'm going to briefly say something about each person. Um, so be, since we have kind of a large group with us today, and I want to make sure everyone gets to say their piece, um, I will introduce you. And then after I make your introduction, if you could go ahead and give your remarks, uh, two to three minutes. Um, and then I will, then we'll move on to the next person. And then after everyone has finished speaking, then we can do our question and answer. So uh, the first person on, and is that good with everybody? Good? All right. <laughs> so our first panelist is David Brown. Dave is the club sponsor for Team's 26,000 Derby Middle School Bulldogs Robotics in Derby, Kansas, with eight VRC teams competing in the 2019-2020 season. Dave serves as a Project Lead the Way Gateway Master Teacher and Project Lead the Way Core Training Instructor. Dave has been a VEX Robotics coach for six years. Dave, would you like to go ahead? Yes. Good morning. Uh, yes, my uh, background, as uh, as Carol said, is uh, actually started with uh, Project Lead the Way and was working with all of the EDR equipment uh, there. And we jumped in after realizing that we needed to put some competition, uh, some additional hooks, I guess, if you will, to get kids in involved. And so. Uh, our school actually was the uh, the first middle school in Kansas to jump into uh, working with REC uh, activities, and we went to our first uh, event six years ago. Um, it was a nothing but net uh, event, and we uh, just we were one one robot with uh, 29 team members 
uh, out there and uh, uh, we're in a blended situation for that. But um, our second year in, why we had a chance to go ahead and jump in and start uh, hosting our own events as well with our regional support manager, Kirk Norred, who serves uh, not only Kansas, but Oklahoma and uh, Missouri as well. Uh, he was uh, right there uh, at our side, kind of helping us through. And uh, uh, I think probably the things that I noticed uh, from our initial discussions was the the personal uh, the personal touch, just making sure that uh, he understood uh, what it was that we needed and and uh, kind of served as that liaison back to the uh, REC. So that was very helpful for us, particularly because we felt like we were not only going uh, cutting edge, but we want to make sure that we weren't going bleeding edge uh, into this being the first middle school there for that. So uh, I can remember that first first year, uh, him coming in on a Friday night to make sure that everything was ready to go for us and and uh, just very, very helpful uh, for us. But uh, many, many lessons uh, learned through the years. Um, uh, delegation was definitely a big one. and. Uh, just knowing that he was out there in the trenches with us. So that was a big thing for us. Excellent, thank you. It is nice to know you're not in it alone, right? Definitely yeah. the, uh, the idea of not being on an island uh, right. alone is a good one. Right. <laughs> Our next panelist is Don, Don Custer. Don teaches physics and computer science at South Hagerstown High School in Hagerstown, Maryland. Is it Hagerstown or Hagerstown? Hagerstown? Hagerstown. Don has been teaching Hagerstown. Perfect. Don has been teaching for eight years and has been advising and coaching VEX Robotics as an after school program for the last seven years. Don became an event partner three years ago. So, Don, all yours. Thanks. Good afternoon. Yeah, it's afternoon where I'm at. Uh, um, like she said, I was, uh, I have been an EP for three years, but I started uh, in our county back when Jim Crane was our RSM, way back when. Um, he was an RSM for the first year or two. He helped a lot, even when I was just a coach, helping me learn the little things, uh, the little nuances about the game being fresh out of the gate. A uh, couple years back, we got Ben. Ben has helped with the, as, as Dave said, the personal touches. Uh, he's helped quite a bit learning how to use the uh, tournament manager systems, the media stuff, learning how to set things up. Um, it, it, it's, I guess it's all the little things, the itty bitty little details, which are not as present in all the literature that sometimes we get, we get lost in the details. Um, Let's see. Uh, yeah, good point. <laughs> one, of, one of the things that I do love about uh, the RSMs is how easy it is to get a hold of them. If I have an issue or a problem, I just just call him. He answers the phone. He says, "Hi, Don. How you doing? What's what do you need? Where's where's the issue? You know, things like that." Um, I can remember one tournament last year. I had to call him four times because of technical difficulties we were having, and it was a simple click here, click here. That's how you fix it. He's very knowledgeable and very easy to talk to. Um, that's one of the things that I, I like about the RSMs. It's like one of the main things I like, the availability to get a hold of them. Perfect, so. yes. One of the things we are, we are chartered <laughs> with is definitely pick up that phone on a Saturday, right? Yes. Great, thanks, Don. And next is Tina. Tina's on my slide next. Uh, Tina is the instructional technology coach for Williamson County Schools in Franklin, Tennessee, and she began as a VEX IQ middle school teacher and coach and has now transitioned into a district role, district tech coaching role, where she supports events for all middle and high schools in her district, including co-director for the Tennessee VEX IQ and VRC state championships. So Tina, good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Carol. Um, so as, as Carol said, I started out actually just as a robotics teacher, then as a coach. And one of the things that um, Shelly Brasher, who's our RSM, 
really helped me do was jump in with both feet. Um, as soon as she found out that I was interested in hosting events or, you know, working at events, it was all hands on deck. Every question that I had, she answered. She was always available. Um, we were are kind of in the stage where when I started teaching, there, there basically was no robotics in our county at all. Um, we started out with, with one team, kind of kind of like Dave did there, and um, grew to almost 30 this year and probably about 80 next year, um, you know, depending on what happens with the pandemic. Um, but the only reason that we've been able to do that and host multiple tournaments is that the, all the support that we got from REC, and we really get that support from Shelly, um, and kind of echoing Dawn's sentiment is, you know, she's always available. When when I call, she answers the phone. Um, you know, anybody that's hosted a tournament knows that if you've got one issue that you can't get the right button to come up, that it can completely, you know, stop your tournament, which just has a snowball effect on its success throughout the day. And so having somebody there, um, you know, it's like calling customer support and they actually answer the phone instead of, you know, putting you on hold. And so having that, that, that crutch um, of knowing that if you don't know how to do something, then instantly you can, you know, get an answer uh, just makes a, a huge difference. And so Shelly and I have, have really formed a great working relationship where um, whether I'm, you know, serving as an EP, whether I'm at somebody else's tournament as a judge advisor or a head ref or, you know, a director, it doesn't matter what it is that, you know, she is there to, to help you and kind of give you that support you need. And so, you know, to me, that's just an ideal quality of an RSM. Perfect. And sometimes it helps just to even talk to your RSM and talk through something, because sometimes even you know the answer to the problem you might be having, but so, so much is going on that day during your event that, I don't know, you know, it just happens, you know, some things just get forgotten or whatever, and just talking it through with someone sometimes helps you to figure out what it is that yes. is the problem. And, and sometimes just by the time I call her and tell her the problem, then it pop, the answer right. will pop in your head. Yeah, I've had that happen. <laughs> Thanks, Tina. Uh, James is next. James Job is the Robotics and Engineering Program Manager for Clear Creek ISD in Houston, Texas. And James hosts over 20 days of competitions throughout the year, including VRC, VexIQ, VexU, Skills USA, and the Texas Region 3 Championships. He's the State Technical Chair for the Skills USA Mobile Robotics Technology Competition. James? So, yeah, um, my experience in VEX kind of started, I guess, back in 2013, where my daughter was on a pilot team for VEX IQ. Um, I, I remember that event fondly where we kind of showed off some things at a FLL event. And uh, Andy Shafts, who was the MC, who was just a colleague at the time, handed the microphone off to me because no one knew anything about VEX IQ. Um, so our region has grown quite significantly since then. Um, and, uh, you know, we've gone from having very few events to, uh, a ton. Um, my district's a little unusual. This is our 25th season competing in robotics competitions. Um, and we are kind of the, the main, uh, host in our region. So my relationship with the RSM is a little bit different. Um, our RSM lives in a different region so a lot of things end up coming to me first just because people know me because i'm the local guy here so i have a pretty solid working relationship with with diana um uh, like i said before like donald said um you know i can call her anytime day or night and and she's there on the phone with me um i run a lot of unusual events um i I run leagues for both VRC and IQ. Um, I'm the only IQ league in Texas. I run a number of multi-division events. Um, I have done some unusual things with some of our events as far as uh, our size requirements. We have 143 robotics teams that are just mine in my district, um, plus the surrounding area. So some of our events have to be set up a little bit uh, different. Uh, we're the only ones, like I said, running multi-division events. So uh, things can get complicated real quick. So Diana's always there to help me out with anything that we need. Um, and 
yeah. Uh, Excellent. Thanks, James. And next up, we have Marie Timms. Now, Marie is joining us from Australia, where now it is Friday at 2 a.m. So <laughs> there's dedication. So uh, Marie is from Wangaratta, Australia. And she is a math and science teacher at Galen Catholic College, which is a regional high school in Wangaratta. And this past season, her team won one of the 2020 Online Challenge Community Awards. Marie received the VEX Australia 2018 Volunteer of the Year Award and 2019 VEX Australia VRC Teacher of the Year Award. And Marie's region was the first in Australia to get involved in VEX Robotics. So Marie, thank you for joining us. I hope you have your coffee with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not at this time of the morning. I want to get back to sleep. <laughs> Good. Um, yeah, uh, we've been involved in VEX since 2016 and we were the first regional area. Um, it was in, VEX started in Melbourne with Travis Burrows, who was, um, or maybe actually, no, before Travis, we found out, was Nancy, um, Na Nancy Mac. Uh, McIntyre from McIntyre. yep so Nancy started it in a in Australia and Travis who was inducted into the hall of the stem hall of fame this year as well so we only got a an RSM last year who was the wonderful Jess McGaffin so we've been um, Australia hasn't had an had an RSM well we did didn't have an RSM when I was about, when first started. And Travis was, I guess, a bit like you, James, is the go-to guy. And so we sort of um, were, we sort of started our teams and got our region up and running. And so Travis really helped us get going. And so we've had a, a really, I guess, an interesting time of trying to work with Travis, knowing that he he was a, had full time teaching jobs and trying to help, but he was really helpful. And last year, when we've got Jess in, um, it's really changed a whole lot of things for me. Even though I'm quite ex experienced with running events and, and that just having Jess around, we've had a few glitches, we've been able to just chat to her, things have been fixed really quickly. Um, and even if she's been new, she's just learnt everything really quickly. Um, but the, the really nice thing for us that I think has been the biggest thing about having, having Jess involved is it's a direct link to um, you guys over in America. The information flow it has been just amazing. Um, so, like we had three teams in our region qualify for VEX Worlds 2020. Um, we know all what, how COVID has, um, you know, thrown everything into the works. Well, we had so many questions. So poor Jess would have been um, fired fired with questions about COVID, about VEX worlds and all sorts of things. And when you're on the other side of the world, to have just that flow of information has yeah, been really, really good. We really, I guess, before we had an RSM, it was information sort of got to us, but in a roundabout way. Um, but now it's just instant. Um, the other thing when we, when I first started, all the um, equipment we had to get order in equipment either via New Zealand or Hong Kong, and um, so now to have our own headquarters in Australia within a it took six weeks to get to us. Now it's maybe five days, so three days to five days. It's just fantastic um, what's been happening. So we've really loved it. We know Jess's can just answer things for us or at least find out the information. So um, it's really been good to have an RSM in the first place. Excellent, true. If, if, we, if the RSM doesn't know the answer, 
they certainly know who does have the answer. So that, that is a huge help. Thanks, Marie. And then we have David Parisi. Dave is the teacher at J.M. Robinson High School in Concord, North Carolina. And he was the first to introduce North Carolina to official VEX robotics events in the 2013-2014 season. He's currently the coach of five high school VRC teams, four VEX IQ teams, and he's cur and and is the oh, I'm, I know I'm going to mess this up. Cabarrus County, is that right? And is the Cabarrus County Schools Director of VEX competitions. Cabarrus County has 37 active schools with 94 teams and hosted 13 events last season. Dave is the recipient of the 2019 Inspiration All-Star Award. David? Thanks, Carolyn. I wanted to say good afternoon to everybody. Um, and uh, good morning to uh, good morning to you, uh, Marley, out there in Australia. I'm a little bit jealous. You're a little bit closer to Friday happy hour than the rest <laughs> of us here in the States, but uh, we'll press forward. Yeah, I got involved in official VEX in the 2013 season uh, after meeting some of the REC uh, foundation folks during the, I had a TSA, uh, TSA team that I started um, my very first year as a technology education teacher when I wasn't coaching. I, for 10 years at my high school, I was the head wrestling coach and uh, overseeing a bunch of uh, guys that want to diet and beat other people up. And now I have a classroom full of future engineers. Um, but I started that year and I worked with some guys from REC Foundation. Um, the, I, I've had the pleasure of working with two um, regional support managers with the REC Foundation. The first one is no longer with them, but uh, he did a terrific job. I had a tremendous relationship with him, um, and uh, I have since been blessed uh, that Ryan Osweller has moved his family to Asheville, North Carolina, and Ryan, who is a moderator on this session, um, is, is, was my uh, RSM last year, and we had a great working relationship. Um, as, an, as an event partner, um, and I guess in a lot of things that I do, I'm sort of a T's crossed, thighs dotted type of person. So from an organization and event execution and setup and breakdown standpoint, getting volunteers and such in place, I kind of run myself pretty crazy to make sure all those things are done. Um, three years ago when we... Um, went after a district-wide grant with the REC Foundation and got it, uh, my whole scenario sort of changed. Cabarrus County has the bulk of the IQ teams in the state. And when we put these schools on, and they, many of them went to two, three, and four teams, we needed events. So we need, I needed to get some teachers that were brand new to, uh, to VEX Robotics uh, to be event partners. And uh, the only way I was capable of, of doing that was to tell them that I was going to be there uh, to help them for their events. Uh, so again, we did we did 13 events this year uh, for VRC and the balance were all IQ. We had to cancel the IQ um, state championships where we had 60 teams coming in, 30 for middle, 30 for elementary. That was a sort of a shot in the stomach to have to do that. But Ryan has been, uh, um, you know, I've been doing this now for, for eight, nine years, going on nine years. We, you know, I host the bulk of the events in North Carolina, the state championships ever since we started in 2013. We run great events in Cabarrus County. We, we pack them. We actually had to expand capacities this year. But Ryan has, uh, even with the, being a detailed person, I, I still need somebody to back up for, because I'll miss things. Um, and Ryan has been in this longer than I have. And when I, when I heard we were getting Ryan, I was ecstatic. Of course, Josh up in Virginia was wasn't wasn't too happy, but Ryan has uh, he was at most of our events this year. Friday nights he showed up with his one of his young sons, helped me set up. He's uh, technically probably one of the most knowledgeable um, people that I've ever worked with um, and dealt with relative to the equipment setup. Um, Ryan also works, uh, even though I'm sort of a, a main contact for our other event partners here in Cabarrus County. Uh, Ryan works closely with them. He makes sure my robot event pages are, are current and up to date and have the right information on them. Um, he was at most of our events this year, um, and fortunately so. We had, we had some events with some technical issues, and Ryan was right there to, to lend a hand. Um, at the events, uh, you know, there's multiple things going on for an event partner. If it's, if it's technology problem-free, you might have questions by your judging uh, coordinators and things like that. 
Um, so Ryan, on a number of occasions, was able to, uh, I, I could just, Ryan will say, I'll take care of overseeing the judging coordinator. So that let me focus on keeping the event um, schedule going and other questions and, and coaching situations and things like that. Um, and, he, and he also stayed around to help us break down. And uh, there, are, there are many occasions that our breakdowns took less than um, 35, 40 minutes for a four field IQ thing with the four, five, six displays running. Um, uh, just a couple other notes um, that I would put out to the, to the participants here is uh, I've been to every event partner summit since I started back in with toss up. And of course, this is the first virtual one. And some of the stuff after a while, you know, of course, we kind of get some things down, but these event partner summits helped me get some small details um, that help make for a better event. Um, and uh, I, I, you know, uh, for the life of me, can't imagine how these RSMs do what they do. Uh, I, at one time, a couple years back, had a new event partner up in the Raleigh area that wanted to host a combined IQ and VRC event. And I told him I'd go up and help him. Our other North Carolina RSM couldn't make it. And Friday night at 6.30, when I finally got to his facility, what I walked into, um, I, I stopped and for about 10 minutes I stood and I almost walked out of the facility. Um, nothing was done. Fields were literally piled in a corner that they got from EMC, who was one of the main sponsors. And uh, we pulled it off. Um, I had to make five or six calls back to my school and have my assistant coach load various things on the on the bus to bring up for that event. But I remember calling my, it was not Ryan at the time, but I remember calling my RSM and asking him, what would protocol have been if you were, if you walked in on that event? And uh, he said, I, I might've walked out. Um, but I didn't get, I didn't get back to my hotel that evening until 1.30 in the morning. And uh, it was, it was just a, you know, we, we, we pulled off a good event, but I can't imagine what the RSMs go through. It's, uh, I, don't, I don't think I could do what I do without one. They're, they're a tremendous help, and I look forward. The other, the other thing, too, as far as the uh, working with RSM and getting information, um, that story that I just told, that gentleman, obviously, he didn't click on one document in the, RS, in the REC Foundation's website. He didn't, he didn't read one thing. He, he was clueless as to what he was doing. And I would encourage all event partners. I mean, the information is there. The documents are there. You, you, they've made the website a little bit friendlier so that you can find the stuff. But uh, the information is there. Um, and there's a lot of questions that RSMs are probably asked that they, they don't need to be. Um, it's just because somebody didn't take the time to go look for the answer. That's about it. Excellent. Yeah, I hope everyone got a chance to sit in on the session um, given by Andy Schaffs and his team about the team guide. Um, I think to that point, David, about making sure you can find the information you need. I think that's going to be a, a huge help and a huge resource for everybody. Well, thanks very much, everyone. Let's um, move on to our question and answer. So um, I'm going to ask if Ryan and Ben, if you don't mind, if y'all, if you guys could hop on with your cameras and if we could see what kind of questions we have from our attendees. Yeah, we did have one question pop up already, and I know some people have chimed in, uh, but do RSMs come to our tournaments? And I don't know if it's from maybe a newer, Jane asked, do RSMs come to our tournaments? So I'll throw this out there. Um, like to, there's some commentary that's already there about um, RSM covering four states. Um, I know mine covers three regions. Um, in Texas, we've had a, a lot of turnover. It's completely different than what it was in 2018. A um, couple people have moved on to to other things. I'm I'm happy to see Ruben moving into his uh, support role at um, REC Foundation, but I hate to lose him as one of our RSMs. Um, we have five regional EPs, so we have a number of different events that are all going on at the same time, and they can't be everywhere. Um, but the one good thing um, that your RSMs are about coordinating, kind of like what uh, um, David said a minute ago, is really coordinating to get some of those key uh, EPs, the experienced EPs, to, to go to events and help out smaller people when the RSM can't be there. Um, that's been pretty important to help grow 
Um, our region's experienced a lot of growth in the last couple of years, and we have a lot of first time event partners. So um, if your RSM can be there, but if your RSM can't be there, uh, they're a great resource for finding an event partner that can come help you out um, and be there to answer any of those questions when something, because your first time something's gonna come up weird. I think also uh, in our in our area, since we're we're growing, uh, we actually asked some of our veteran people if they'd be interested in being a mentor uh, to one of those early uh, early EPs, and that's that's something that's kind of taking off as well. I would also add in that you know even if your RSM can't come to your event, they are still a resource for you on that day. So, you know, make sure you have the, their cell phone number in your cell phone and, you know, they're, they're going to answer the phone if at all possible and they're going to help you out. And so even if they're not there um, and they're at some other event, it doesn't mean that they're not available to you. Um, I've never tried to contact my RSM on a Saturday and, and not been able to either get through to her or get a response back in just, you know, the, the littlest time possible. So, you know, even if they can't make your event, um, it doesn't mean that they're not trying to support you on that day. And if I could, I'll chime in from the RSM perspective. Um, you know, and Dave, thanks for the kind words. But, you know, if there's, let's say, two events on the same day and one is uh, a very, very experienced partner like Dave and one might be a very new event partner, you know, I as the RSM really need to go to that new event partner to really be that support. Um, but it's also, I think someone said about the coordination, if you know, we can't be in five different places. So, you know, is there an experienced event partner they could go be a lending hand to that, to that event or uh, someone experienced that can go help out there. But yeah, we're always a phone call away too. Right, and we have, and actually Ben and Ryan and myself all report to the same uh, director of regional operations. And we have a system that we call, well, that he calls phone a friend. So if if um, during your event, for some whatever reason, and you know, sometimes, I don't know how it is for you guys, but sometimes my phone doesn't always get reception, especially in the mountains and whatnot, if I'm inside of a gym or whatever, and I don't get reception, um, you know, and I don't get, you know, there's always backup, there's always backup there. And if I don't have the, the answer to the question on the phone, I have a, a friend that I can call, we can call Mike, um, and if, and usually Mike always knows the answer, but um, you know, in the event that he doesn't, then you know, he, he knows people he can call. So you have multiple layers of support that day and the night before. Yeah, I've, a couple people said that. Uh, the night before sometimes is just as important as the day of because you want to leave that gym or whatever that night knowing that everything is going to work. Anybody else? Do we have any other questions, Ben and Ryan? Ben, do you want to take the one about um... The one from Michelle? Sure. I was actually just typing out a response, but I'll, I'll say it instead. Um, so Michelle's question is from the RSM's perspective, is there one resource or document that we EP seem to not know about and that leads to lots of unnecessary calls? Um, so first thing is I would say that no call is unnecessary. Um, you know, the, the role that the RSM has at events is to help you troubleshoot and Sometimes that troubleshooting might be looking up a document, but if it's something in the heat of the moment, um, or you don't, you're not sure where to look, or you just don't have it, you know, call your RSM. It's not unnecessary. Um, and it was mentioned before, but I think it's worth repeating, is that a lot of times you know more than you think you do. Um, and I've experienced this as an EP and as an RSM, where just explaining the problem over the phone leads you to the answer because you're slowing down, you're thinking it through. Um, and I've actually had, um, like I think Don mentioned, he called me a bunch of times for an event. I think half the time he's like, oh, I got it. Just talking it through solves the problem. Um, I was just I gonna say, say that. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's not, there are no unnecessary calls. It's what we're here for, um, is to support you. Um, the other thing I wanted to, to kind of bring up is this was something mentioned in the, the previous session about championship events. And that is, you know, the best way to avoid having the, the unknown unknowns come up is to do a practice run of everything first. 
Um, so I had an event partner in one of my states this year that was really good at running events um, and running tournament manager, but they never done finals before. So they get the finals and then suddenly, okay, what's, I never started alliance selection. How do I do that? And that's just, you know, it's easy enough to, to solve over the phone, but going through that ahead of time is a way to kind of get that stuff out of the way. So hopefully that answers that question. And I'll throw this in there too. Um, there's been a number of different changes in the way that uh, REC has had some of their documentation. I know we had an event partner who um, couldn't figure out the uh, the uh, design award rubric because it moved from being its own document to being inside the judge's guide. So little things like that, um, communicating with your RSM about some of those updates. I, I like what has happened. Some of those things have been streamlined, but also if you've been, even if you've been doing it for a while and you're used to certain things being kind of split out on their own with some of the reorganization of the documentation every year, it's important to keep track of those and your RSM can keep you updated on where those things are. Uh, yeah, Kirk, another RSM uh, posted pre-event checklist is a great resource for new EPs. I would agree with that. I'd like to take the time to, you know, Ben hit on a, a key thing for many of the new EPs that are on this session. Simulate the event on your own time beforehand. As much of what you're going to do, I remember back my first year, just getting to learn tournament manager. I would go to one of our classrooms in our career technical ed that had 15, 20 all-in-one Dell desktops and put tournament manager on them because I was going to use them for displays. Um, and as I was figuring out how to turn displays on and off and change them and pit versus audience, um, you know, I got a comfort level with all the things that were going to be taking place um, beforehand. And, you know, having had, we had seven different event partners this year, seven different schools that hosted. One of my, one of my main tasks this year, pre-COVID, was going to be to get two or three of those seven uh, to go through some training, some event training, and Ryan and I were, had already started to discuss what the format was going to be, but we were going to have some, we we're going to actually set up an event on a Saturday, and so that we had two or three within our system that could help the other event partners that might be coming on, you know, from the first time. Um, going into this season with COVID, three of my event partners, teachers, fellow teachers, that have been involved for multiple years and have done events for multiple years that I've pretty much helped them with and, and pretty much basically ran. Um, out of the seven, I got three that are going to different schools, different capacities, no longer gonna be involved in VEX and again. So there's always gonna be this rotation of people. And I, I think be that person that's gonna be proactive. Um, don't be that person that well, it just, it'll just happen because of, uh, I've knock on wood, I haven't had any major, major, major issues, but a, a, a VEX event using a lot of technology and electronics can go, can go bad real quick if you don't know what you're doing. David, I would also uh, echo that. Um, don't test uh, on the Friday night before your meet. You got to wait or you got to have it er much earlier than that so that if you have to have your district tech support people intervene uh, on it. We uh, added a router uh, this year that uh, we tested at one building while well, we moved it over to a different building and all of a sudden there were different parameters that we were having to work with. Uh, probably the best thing that I've learned this this school year was from another another EP who he found a way through his district to have a tech support person be their tournament manager and they were able to comp time that that uh, person's time on a Saturday. So he got the comp time for a Friday off or whatever it would be. But just having boots on the ground from a technical really lowered the blood pressure of that EP. And I'll throw this in. Um, that pre-event checklist was uh, kind of a starting point for us. We started with that. Um, I threw this into a session earlier where we have a multi-page, um, a pre-event checklist that we started with uh, that document and kind of made our own very detailed post-event checklist. 
Um, and even things you need to know, and we Slack this out to all of our uh, volunteers, and uh, it, it includes everything in, down to uh, what the t-shirt prices are, because you'd be surprised how the uh, guy who's running the practice field on the far end of the facility is asked, how much is that t-shirt this guy's wearing? So we started with those checklists and really expanded them, um, but all those are great starting points um and really help develop your own um for your specific event and that's going to help your event run a lot smoother and marie did you want to say something i saw your mic come on a couple times yeah my biggest advice is to really think about what your strengths are and then gather your allies my strengths is is getting people on board getting volunteers um getting the PR out there. We've got three event managers or EPs in our region and we work really closely together. The other two do the setting up. Uh, so we organise our events so that they don't clash and that we can all support each other. I do all the, the PR, getting volunteers, getting judges, working on that side of things. And they do the tech and the field and have that sorted. So. It's getting your allies, knowing what your strengths are, and then who can complement your strengths. And it just works works nicely. You don't have to be the, the font of all knowledge. We have about four minutes left in our session. Um, David, your mic is on. Did you have something to say? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And Ryan and Ben, is there anything else we need to address in our remaining three minutes? Not yet, but no. I know Tina is unmuted, so go ahead. Yes. I'm sorry, Tina, I didn't see you there. That's okay. I'm sorry. Um, something just kind of occurred as Marie was talking about playing to people's strengths. Um, and that is that one of the, the strengths of having an RSN behind you is when it comes to difficulties that might happen with, you know, coaches, teams, parents during the day, um, you know, rule problems, those type of things the RSM is, is there to be the bad guy if necessary, to make the, the decisions, um, you know, they, they are your backup. So if, as the EP, if there is a situation that arises that, that you feel like you need backup with, that you need help, that you need somebody to say, you know, to, to kind of, of be, be the fall guy, uh, you know, if, if for no lack of a better phrase, um, that they are there to do that. You know, all our EPs are volunteers, they're, you know, giving up their time at our, and, you know, we don't want the EPs to be in a situation where, you know, you are having to, to make these, these really, really tough calls without any kind of, kind of backup. So, you know, if situations arise that you are, you know, uncomfortable with, by all means, contact your RSM and let them, you know, talk you through it, or if they're there, you know, work with them. Um, but that's a really good thing to know, especially if you are a, a, a new EP or considering being an EP and you're wanting to know what roles all the, that the RSM has. Well, it's great that they, you know, help you with the, all that stuff during, during the event and setting up for the event, but that if you have issues, um, you know, and, and like, you know, Marie was talking about strong points, confrontation may not be your strength, then rely on your RSM to help you with that as well. That is an excellent point. Thank you so much for bringing that up because it's a huge role because we want to preserve the relationship that you have with your volunteers. Like you said, it's really, really important because most of you do host multiple events. So we are there to be that impartial uh, third person. So yeah, it's very important. Great. Well, it's one minute before the hour and I think our time is up. So I'm going to put my thank you slide up. So thank you all for being here. And thanks to everybody who tuned in today to our session. You are why we're here and you are so important to us and we really, really appreciate all of our event partners. You are the reason we do what we do for our students um, and our students are what we what makes our mission complete. So um, thank you for being here and please enjoy the rest of the EP Summit. And thank you very much, enjoy your day.